Greetings. Welcome to 13 Moons Manifestation. Sourcing forgiveness, sourcing light from shadow. We are here for our monthly introduction for the next cycle coming. Hi, Christine and Cheryl. How y'all doing? Hi. Happy to be here. <laughs> Me too. So I'm going to just bless us in and then we are going to get ourselves started. You have one of your animals that's going to join us? She's in the closet and she will open the door at some point. Okay, great. <laughs> and you won't see her. You'll just see the door open. Okay, perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we bless all the animals. Thank you, spirit. So how good it is to center into this space, to know that right where we are, the divine goddess, God presence is activated. I give thanks for the power of the eclipse and the full moon, trusting and knowing that these energies are activated within each and every one of us, those who are here on this call and those are, who are listening to the recording. The beauty of our lives, the light of our lives, the power of our lives that comes from shadow. I trust and know that this journey this month will be filled with everything that we need to forgive ourselves and find the power to source the light to be who we're born to be. I give thanks, I let it be, and I say, and so it is. Ashe. So it is. So it is. All right, let's go. Yay. <laughs> Okay. Here. All right. So um, we're doing a little bit of a preview tonight for the 13 Moons group and talking about um, kind of an introduction to the theme that we'll be working on this month and this whole theme of forgiveness. Um, the the cycle that we're moving into is um, the Gemini full uh, the Gemini new moon and the Capricorn full moon and so that's kind of where we're getting some of the theme material from. Um, Monique, do you want to just like we can break down Gemini Capricorn a little bit and just talk about um, what these energies are that we're going to be moving through this next month? Sure, sure. Um, yeah. So I love. I love the Gemini energy. I have a Gemini moon and the Gemini energy is, I think the most basic way we think about it and talk about it is when we, you know, it's about our speaking and our communicating and, um, and, and I think that that's really significant, but how I come to it is really understanding it. It is like a, um, it's a, it's a, it's an energetic that we develop as children, like as infants perceiving like what is it that we're seeing you know what is that is that mommy is that daddy you know being able to identify and then the feelings that come from that and then we get language for it later in life like that's the Gemini energy it's this it's taking in information and and then creating you know story or language that goes with the perception that we take in so that's how I experience Gemini how about you Christine yeah, I think that's great. I, I, I experience it too, because I, I think the energy of it is like, it's that inquisitiveness that children have, you know, like, what is that? What is this? You, like, you know, we're kind of open and we're curious and we're communicative. And, um, and I, I like what you said about how, like, how we, we find the labels for things, you know, because that's really like, that's what language is. It's like, it's how we label things. And mm -hmm. so because of that, it's mm -hmm. also it's mutable. It's changeable. How we label something is, is basically like it's shorthand for how we perceive it. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about that is it can change, yeah. you know, like we, we can shift that at any point. And so, um, so Gemini is that sort of quick moving energy that, yeah. um, you know, like uh, you see it, like we, when we move into Gemini season, like you just see people all of a sudden, like wanting to interact and wanting to talk and, mm -hmm. and, I've actually noticed like a couple of people that I know on Facebook that are like really quiet or all of a sudden just like, blah, 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 you know, like you're posting a ton. And <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's that, that mental energy gets like really online. Yeah. You know, when well, we have a Gemini, Gemini amongst us. We have someone here with us. Who's a Gemini. We do. <laughs> I am not Gemini. <laughs> What's it's, ex show? it's exactly how I experienced myself though. Just the way you guys described it. Um, and as I've matured over time, right, that my capacity to understand the 
my ability to shift perspective and to communicate in new and better ways. Mm. Um, yeah, that's been ben very beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. And it also enlivens my capacity to be able to feel in very deep ways at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's kind of like, you know, so the new moon is going to be in Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so that's the energy we're working with. And then the full moon is going to be in Capricorn. Yes. Capricorn's a whole different animal. <laughs> a whole, a whole different thing. <laughs> really, for real, right? Mm-hmm. Capricorn, so Capricorn is like our structure, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. literally like the way that we, it's our bones. It's like how we lay foundations for things. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's where we, it's where we're responsible. You know, it's, it's like where we're willing to do the day to day work to get to a task, you know, like Saturn moves slowly. It's wisdom over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really like, it's, it's, it's where we, where we build from it's where we it like it can be where we accomplish in the world too like right. our reputation and um how we show up in that way but it like i i like to think of it as as like it you know it's where we take those basic responsibilities and create a structure for ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah capricorn i that's it i don't have anything to add <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yes, yes to that. And let's move on. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, you know, so that's where our full moon is in yeah. Capricorn. So, you know, we're going to start out this cycle kind of clearing around our, our mind and the various ways that we perceive things. And then at the full moon, um, you know, we're really going to be expanding into this place of what structures do we have in place? Where do we need to take responsibility in our lives? Mm -hmm. And the theme that we're working with this month, the reason that, that forgiveness plays into all of this, mm -hmm. um, when we start our moon cycle on June 2nd, we're, the moon is going to be in Pisces mm -hmm. and, um, and Pisces sometimes is really like where you need to surrender, where you need to let go. And so the theme of forgiveness came up um and how I see it kind of weaving together and you can both weigh in on this but what I was feeling like how this all plays together is that um sometimes we have to to move on we have to forgive ourselves for how we have perceived things how we've behaved what we've said what people have said to us what has been you know done to us um supposedly and um and in order to really create this new collective structure that mm -hmm. is being creative we have to own our part in it and we have to forgive ourselves for how we've held it into place mm -hmm. and so that's kind of like how I see the theme is like how this is unfolding and how this all works together this month do you guys have any thoughts on on that as well um I I I think that makes complete sense with Pluto and Capricorn there is this it's you know it's the it's the devil it's the underworld and so we all have participated in the in the ways and it's you know that's an interesting thing to say you know coming in the body that I'm in right because the body that I'm in could tell a extraordinarily profound victim story and I have and sometimes I might do it again <laughs> one day <laughs> But I'm clear that I'm a part of the creation of it. I'm a part of the solution. I'm a part of the, the challenge, all of it, right? It's so, so the, the opportunity is to, for me, you know, and all of us is to really look at ourselves, to look at ourselves, to look at our shadows. How have we participated? And one of the things about Capricorn, it's about the authority, right? And one of the things we do in this country is we give our authority away to others. We vote, voting is giving your authority away to somebody. We think that our parents know better than us. We think that teachers have the answers. We think that doctors, all of that is a way of giving your authority away, away right? Rather than being able to like understand how to heal yourself and like really taking responsibility for ourselves. And I see that as my own shadow. Like, can I fully stand in my own power and take responsibility? and mm -hmm. stop handing over the baton to other people mm -hmm. yes yeah Hoo -hoo. powerful cycle <laughs> me 
Yeah, powerful and like, um, there's a lightness in part of it and there's a and there's a heaviness in part of it too. It's like, it's both and, you know, it's like the, right. and I think that, um, I think this forgiveness piece too is just kind of a key in moving between those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is forgiveness and why does it matter? You know, like why look at this particular theme? Um, any thoughts on just like, how do you even define forgiveness? Hmm. You go first, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, forgiveness is an interesting word for me because the paradigm I'm in is there's no good, no right, no bad, no wrong, right? Nobody's done anything to me. So forgiveness, literally, sometimes I have to just to put myself in the direction of it. So forgiveness for me is the stepping stone right before full acceptance, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes I might be in the position where it really, I am locked in that space of somebody did something to me, even though I know something else, right? So it's like the beginning of me stepping in fully into my own participation in something. It's just saying something's gone awry here. I feel a way. I'm, lo I'm looking this way. So let me start here. And then forgiveness allows me, it's like the energy that allows or assists me with coming fully to myself. And then I turn the energy of forgiveness to myself, right? So it's like the beginning of my total acceptance of embodying the event that's gone down and I take full responsibility for how it got manifested and what it is trying to teach me and how it's growing me. Yes. Right. It's like the invitation to start the inner, the deep dive inside. Yeah. That's what it is for me. I think it's interesting that, um, in many of the spiritual traditions, the concept exists of forgiveness, you know, of, of, uh, um, and I, I think of it as like a kind of alchemy really. Mm -hmm. It's like, because when you, when you're in that space where you believe that there's something to forgive, you believe you've been wronged or, or just you're hurting or you've done something that you regret or whatever it is that, that has you feeling guilt or like something happened that was wrong. Um, being able to move in that space of forgiveness, like I think there's an alchemy to it. It, it starts to free you, mm -hmm. you know, like it, you, you do start to move into that perspective where, um, when you're projecting it outwards, when you're blaming or you feel, or, or even shame is kind of just like pulling it inwards, you know, like, um, you can't, you can't access your power from that place. And so forgiveness is like sort of a vehicle to pull your power back, yeah. you know, like to take the charge away, um, to like where we're talking about Gemini and the mind and how we can fixate and we can tell a story about something. Mm -hmm. Um, it's choosing to tell a different story mm -hmm. and the choosing can shift it. Mm -hmm. Is the power. The choosing is, is the acceptance of personal authority. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so getting a little deeper with forgiveness, I just, you know, we kind of jotted some things down here to look at. I believe it's something you have to do for yourself. I think that's why sometimes there's pushback, you know, like feeling forced to forgive or feeling forced to move through something before you're ready to, mm -hmm. like you're really fully ready to stand in it yourself. Um, I actually think that slows the process. I think you have, like, it really does have to feel like a choice. Mm -hmm. And and it has to be something you choose yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I don't, exactly. nothing, nobody else can force you to forgive. And I think it's fake when that happens. It's like, oh, you need to, you need to forgive. Like, you need to let that go. No, I don't have to do anything before I'm ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not one. No, it's true because the forgiveness is really for ourselves. Right. It's not As something a, you like bestow on another person. It's for you. They don't write. It changes your frequency only. I'm a whole Pono Pono practitioner. And one of the things that they trained for us is that when you're doing that process, it's because you are literally in the understanding that nothing, you're part of everything that happened. 
You're literally part of everything that's gone down. Even if a client walks in a room and they've had an event that I wasn't a part of, I was a part of it in some way. In some way, it's been connected to me, even if it's through that client. And so that forgiveness, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, and thank you. You say that repeatedly over and over again, and there's an alchemy, Christine, that takes place, the alchemy that you're talking about. You start thinking one thing and you end up someplace else mm -hmm. in the process of the Ho'oponopono. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's like you, it expends a lot of energy to be projecting that outward, to be, to be blaming, to be angry at somebody else for something that happened. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing when you make space to forgive, like just it's forgiving yourself for your part mm -hmm. in it, you know, like, and um, for your part in that creation. And it doesn't, I don't think it means that, um, mm -hmm. I think people get hung up on, you know, like, oh, well, it means what happened was okay. You know, what happened is just what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and it really isn't making any statement about whether it's okay. Some things happen that are painful and that's still real. I have discovered that when I can make peace with the fact that everything serves me in my life, mm -hmm. everything serves me. If I can get to the place that this really painful thing is of service to me somehow, then mm -hmm. that thing you just mentioned is not like, then I'm not, then I don't feel like I've let somebody off the hook, right? It, it becomes yeah. like it's not even about them at all anymore. It's totally about me. Mm -hmm. If I am really wanting to grow, if that, you know, and my belief is that people who are here doing this kind of work really are working to access their power. So the need to, for me, the need to make somebody, to feel like I'm letting somebody off the hook or somebody's getting away with something, that just, it just falls away because it's, this is all, it's all here. Yeah. Because pain, pain ultimately is in the same frequency as power. Yes. Only pain is constricted power. So the minute we feel the pain, no matter the story, ultimately we can start a process that brings us into our power, which means that we completely let go of the whole entire struggle. Mm -hmm. And that only happens here. So pain is just evidence of this power to be retrieved on any subject. Yeah. Yeah. Forgiveness is the door to begin. Yeah. yeah. I think the pain is just kind of a signal, you know, that there's mm -hmm. something there's something to pay attention to. There's the something myth. to feel. There's something to allow to arise mm -hmm. so that you can respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't say it's easy. <laughs> we just tell you it's very possible. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, like it's simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of things. It's a practice and, you know, like we're at different places with it. And it does get easier when you practice. Most things that you practice do get easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Because you're changing at a frequency level. Every time you do the process, you are enlivening your frequency to a higher level of consciousness. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. I can take this, Christine. Can I take this? Okay. Yeah. So we will, this month, we will examine the stories we tell about the things that happened. We will explore new perceptions. We will find places we hold old patterns in place. We will create a safe foundation to build from, and we will face what we perceive as weakness and find our strength. What an incredible opportunity. Like this Yay. is such a freaking life lesson. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Starting on sure. June 2nd. Starting, Starting on June, on June 2nd. 2nd. <laughs> yep. That's right. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Want to talk about this too? Um, yeah, great. Um, when we allow forgiveness, we found we find our own innocence. Oh God, that's so significant. Hmm. At 13 Moon, starting on June 2nd, we will help you to set two obtainable goals and then watch your goals manifest into physical reality. Do you want to say a little bit about the innocence piece, Christine or Cheryl? Yeah. 
Um, I, you know, the, those words came to me when I was, I was thinking about forgiveness. And I, I really think that that process of being with something that is painful, you know, or that we've perceived ourselves as the victim. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, when we move to that place where we're willing to let go of our perception on that, I think we really tap into the place where um, where our own innocence lies, where like mm-hmm. we clear away the places where we blame ourselves, where we judge ourselves, where we hold shame around things we've done or said or moved through. And, um, and, and like our innocence is really like, I see it as just like, like our essence, you know, like that, our pure essence that we move from, like our, our source. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it just, it, I think when we make space for that and we move these other things out of the way, all that remains is just who we truly are. Mm. How should yeah. mm-hmm. So good. All right. So Cheryl, do you want to talk about the just kind of our system and the moon phases? Mm-hmm. So in this process of bringing you into identifying your goals and achieving your outcomes, the, the moon itself moves through eight phases and each phase uh, gives us an, uh, the way that we're supposed to per- focus our energy and how we're going to start to begin this process of forgiveness, what it is that you're going to align with, how it is that you're going to need to clear yourself so you come into that state. And so there's a phase, three and a half days is, is each phase that moves us through the whole entire process so that you can identify what it is that you want to align with, clear out the old ways of being that are gonna help you to get to that next place, and then call yourself into the manifestation of the innocence of your new beginning. And that happens through the whole entire cycle through eight phases of the moon, which will be held in the very beginning through our feminine energy, which we'll talk to you about, and then shift into the masculine energy, which will also give you some guidance about. So we're gonna be internal and external going through a healing process into manifestation. Okay. It's really, I think that the phases are so powerful because um, again, this is also like a practice, you know, like understanding which phase of the moon is the time for which action or which activity or which energy. Um, It just allows you to be, it's like, it's so, it's like such an, efficient and exquisite process process. It's just like you do the thing that makes the most sense during the phase that makes the most sense. So it's like, you're not wasting your energy in a way, you know, like you're, you're aligning with the energy that is already there and taking the actions that align with that. And so it just like, um, and I, I feel like it gets to a point where you just, you internalize it almost like you can just feel when you're moving through it and it's like, Oh, it's time for this. Because it's happening inside of us anyway, and most of us just don't know. And the moon travels this way naturally. So as women, we're on that 28-day cycle from the day, right. you know, that time that we hit that place. So we, we are literally helping you train your awareness to become conscious of something that's already operating in your being, in your consciousness, and to find your unique rhythm with that. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up, Christine. So important. Yeah. So, um, so we'll be starting a new moon cycle on June 2nd and the focus this month, like what, you know, what you'll be able to do if you move through this cycle with us is really align with forgiving yourself and reclaiming your power and creating a structure that reveals your strength. Mm -hmm. And so the question that you want to ask yourself is, are you ready to move through forgiveness to strength? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I am. <laughs> that yes inside of me. I was like, yes. I know. <laughs> oh my God. It was so beautiful. So yes. <laughs> the other question, the, the other question with that is, because I paused for a second, it's really being able to be, take an honest assessment of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To see 
because a lot of people avoid the step of forgiveness and stay in the resentment, frustration, and struggle of it because they they don't know how they're not willing to humble themselves to the reality that they've got to come to this place of complete responsibility. So the one of the questions is is to ask yourself honestly: Is there a place in, inside of your life that's been wanting your attention and you have desires for a new experience? Ask yourself. Is there an, an emotional outstanding in that space? Is there something that you're needing to take more responsibility for? Is there forgiveness of yourself or someone else that stands in the way of what it is that you truly desire or who you truly desire to express yourself to be? I think that's an important question if you can't readily come to that. Oh, I'm all fine. I, have, I don't have any forgiveness issues. Right. You know, and that just made me, that made me think of something. I think why this can be so difficult is because um, we get conditioned to sort of accept these false gods of power. Like we, we learn that being a victim is powerful, you know, because sometimes when you place yourself in that, that stance, you know, where you believe something is happening to you, there is a charge around it. And sometimes there is like a, there's a manipulation that can happen. Like you can actually receive what feels like power when you're in that stance. And that's kind of the problem because when you, when you move out of it and, and you're, and you're going to take a different perspective on it, it feels like you're losing power if you've yeah. been anchored into that. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to know that because it's going to feel like, oh, I'm losing all my power. I don't have any power. And it's like, I think it's a, a shift you have to make in faith. Like you have to move through it because you're anchored into something that is, it feels like power, but it's not real. It's like, a, you know, it's an emotional charge and feeling like that's mm -hmm. what power is. Yeah. And somebody else is locked into a play with it. Some person, yeah. place, or situation is locked into the place. So not only do you free yourself, but you're freeing this whole other manipulation or dynamic that's in play. And that can feel a little disoriented. You know, you're like, whoa, what's happening? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Like I can really, I can identify the, the time in my life where I really, I didn't know how to get what I wanted without being in that victim position. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was like, oh, if someone feels sorry for me or if someone feels like I need help, that's how I can get what I need. So good, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and so that was like, that was a weird thing to untangle mm -hmm. for me, you know, because it really, it felt like, it feels like dying a little bit, you know, cause you're letting go of that entire container that you've believed, like where you believed power came from, but you can't, the problem is like, you cannot have one foot in victimhood and the other foot in empowerment. They cannot coexist. No. So you have, like, you have to choose. It's like, you're either standing in your power or you're standing in victimhood and you can't be in both. And the way you know you can answer that decide question is- in, When you decide to stand in power, the universe will respond. Right. Right. And, and nobody but yourself changes. That's right. It's right. not hinged on the person, place, or situation changing in any way. It's hinged on your capacity to turn within yourself, lift your own consciousness on the subject. Right. And nobody yeah. else has to do the work. That Just works. you. Yeah. Clearly, we're passionate about this, ladies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this well, because this is, is like a, such so a hard thing for me. It was like, I, I mean, and I still go back to it sometimes. Like, don't get me wrong. It's like, I find myself in that role sometimes where I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm here. Um, and it's like, it was a hard thing to step out of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think that's, I feel like, especially mm -hmm. as women, honestly, I feel like as women, we've been, um, in our culture, we keep women as children on some level, like and not innocent, right? <laughs> and not innocent, exactly. And so, so there is this for I saw in me just this where I just felt helpless, I felt powerless, like a child would or something. And so, I had to really look at what is this powerlessness? What is this sense that I'm helpless? What is it? And it was like, I feel like I'm a child on some level. And so I had to work, I had to look at that inside of me. 
what kind of choices am I making that are really childlike or belief systems? Like, I feel like I can't take care of myself. I feel like I can't provide the life. I need somebody to provide a life for me. I like, and I had to really look at those things and go deep. And I looked like around my money stuff. I felt so victimized in that. And I went so deep and I was like, wow, I come from ancestors who worked for hundreds of years and they got no money for it. Like take that in for a second, right? So, right. so I had this, this thing in me that somebody should take care of me, that I should be taken care of because that, that was what happened, it was ingrained. And so I had to look at that and, and, and it just has made all the difference to be able to see like, oh, I'm generating powerlessness and victimhood based upon stories and ancestral patterns and things that don't really resonate today but I continue to recreate them because I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. absolutely. This is a big deal. This is a big, a big conversation this month. Yeah. Okay. So our community will support you. If you join 13 moons, here's what you'll get. A private Facebook group, complete lunar cycle program, aligning you to the eight, actually nine moon cycles, moon phases, rituals that amplify your power and results, daily support from three coaches, Cheryl, myself, and Christine, moon manifestation library full of resources. Accountability will keep you on track so you can have what you desire. Monthly astro astrological call that Christine leads, full moon guidance, personal, um, full moon guidance, meditation that Cheryl leads, a new moon um, meditation that I lead and emails reminders, email reminders with the lunar phase changes. And this is everything you will need to work with the Gemini and Capricorn energies for this month. Yes. All right. We begin on June 2nd on how to join the 13 moons program. So it's $97 a month. Each month is $97. You can, um, if you sign up by the 31st of May, I will give a um, personal reading to people who sign up before the 31st of May. And if you sign up today, that includes, you will get a personal reading. And is there anything else, ladies? Like, is there anything else? I'm I think you're gonna do a drawing. Oh, I'm, yes. Okay. That's right. I'm going to do a drawing. Okay. So <laughs> whatever it's good. I'm sorry. I feel like my cats are getting into something. They, they so probably exciting. are. But yes. if, you sign, if you sign up before the 31st, on or before the 31st, your name will be entered into a drawing. And then the moon mama is going to do, a, she's going to make a draw on the 31st and that person will receive a reading. Yeah. Thank Personal you. Reading. I appreciate mm -hmm. that because you know those cats are doing something. <laughs> I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Okay, so thank you for that. You left them alone for too long. <laughs> yes. I understand totally. But the yeah. personal oh. reading, a personal reading at the beginning of the cycle is so helpful. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it's going to give you so much insight to how this particular thing is showing up in your chart. Yes which is just priceless, trust me. Priceless, mm -hmm. it is priceless. It's priceless. It is, All right. So, yeah. and Christine does readings and Cheryl does her own types of readings. So when you're with us in this community, you are fully supported by three women who have done the work, who are doing the work and who are happy to be here supporting you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you ladies for being here tonight on a yeah, Friday evening. You. I'm thank so you. excited. Ooh. What a great topic. <laughs> And um, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.